Hey Steve here, how's it going? Now someone asked me recently what the difference is between using the channels panel to create luminosity masks versus using the color range tool. And I have to admit that I've played with the options in the color range tool a couple of times. Uh, I didn't really get on with it at the time, but this question prompted me to look into it a little bit deeper. So in this video is an overview of what I found. Let me know your thoughts or if there's something glaringly obvious that I'm overlooking, then please leave a comment. First on the subject of luminosity masking, if you're new to the idea, then you can download my free PDF guide and introduction to luminosity masking using the link in the video description below. Uh, this will get you up and running with the main idea and concept of luminosity masking so that you can see the benefits of adding the technique to your workflow. In the meantime though, let me show you now what I found while looking into this thing with the color range tool. So at this point, I'm just going to assume that you're sort of familiar with luminosity masking and you know how to create luminosity masks and whatnot. Um, if not, like I said, you can download the free PDF and I've got a bunch of other videos on my channel that will get you up and running. So what I'll do is just, I'm going to use my luminosity masking panel as well, just for the sake of making this all a lot quicker. Uh, so what I figured would be a good demonstration would be to create a channel, which we could then be used as a luminosity mask. Um, using the channels panel method, or in this case, my luminosity masking panel, um, and then try to recreate that same channel or mask with the color range tool. I'm just gonna select, um, maybe let's pick a highlights three selection. Um, so this is going to create a, a mask or a selection that isolates the highlights, and then there's a smooth gradation between the highlights and the shadows. Most of the midtones and shadows are completely um, excluded from this selection as shown by the black areas. Uh, so I'll click use mask, that's gonna load it as a selection over into the channels panel and save it as a new channel. So alpha one, let's rename this to highlights three, H3. So I use the panel, um, but you know, this can be done if you're familiar with luminosity masking you can do this exact same thing using the channels panel if you don't have my luminosity masking panel uh, so h3 let's try to recreate that now using the uh, the color range tool so let's come back into rgb channel so we click there uh, select and color range now usually this is defaulted to sampled colors and you can click in the image to select or create a selection based on the color that you're clicking on. So if I wanted to select everything where there's got this deep purpley blue from the sky, I'll click up in the sky and you can see those uh, colors are being shown in white here in the uh, preview. These purpley colors in the water and you can see they're matched in the sky in some areas. Um, however, if you click this drop down, you can see we've got these highlights, midtones and shadows options. So if we're gonna recreate that highlights channel or luminosity mask, then we'll need to use a highlights. And yeah, what you get here is two sliders, uh, fuzziness and range. So range is basically saying at what point on the histogram is this selection going to um, kind of end? So what's the end point for this selection? So let's say we leave it on 200 it's saying everything above 200 is basically um, the white point. So everything above there is gonna be 100% included in the selection. And the fuzziness is then the, um, you know, the, the kind of the smoothness of the transition between what's selected and what's not. So if we have this all on zero, uh, all the way down to zero, then you'll see that's a very, very harsh selection. Um, where basically everything above 200 in the histogram is selected and everything beneath it or below it is not. Um, that's not ideal. That's not how we want to create luminosity masks. So the fuzziness needs to really come up quite a lot. Um, and in this example, we're going to actually leave this on 255 just because we only want to select those brightest, brightest highlights. So with the range on 255, Let's see if there's a fuzziness value that we can slide this down to that's going to match the H3 channel that we created a minute ago. So just keeping an eye down here. 
Um, maybe somewhere around 50% fuzziness by the looks of it. Uh, okay, let's click OK. We might have to give a couple of goes. Um, so let's now save this as a new channel. So this is color range. Um, okay, so comparing this with Highlights 3, the H3 channel, we can see there's a difference. The color range version is a lot higher contrast. Yeah, we're selecting roughly the same luminosity range. Um, but yeah, this one is a lot higher contrast than H3. Uh, let's see if there's any way, uh, let's go back to RGB. Let's see if there's any way we can adjust this to make it a bit more of a smoother transition. Um, so I think that would involve moving the fuzziness up. Let's go 75 channels. Uh, let's save that as a channel. So this is CR2. Let's move it up. So we can see here CR2, color range 2, is still a lot higher contrast even though if you look in the sky we've kind of selected the same physical area actually in the water and the foreground as well. So we've selected the same physical area, but the color range has created a much higher contrast channel or selection. Uh, and what this means is that we've actually lost all the subtlety of the gradation between the brightest points and the darkest points. So this is potentially not good if you want to create a subtle blend, if you're exposure blending or if you're blending an adjustment into your image, uh, you kind of lose all that subtlety of that smooth gradation between the highlights and the shadows. And yeah, I've really, I haven't found a way of using the color range tool in a way that kind of makes that less of uh, makes that less of an issue so you know at this point here with the range on 255 and fuzziness well I mean the more we move the fuzziness down the higher the contrast of the selection so we really want that lower contrast um, but then you know if we do this on a hundred percent what we get is again we're basically still selecting, well, most of the sky there is included in the selection. It's just then going off and selecting even more of the sky to create that gradation. It's not making that smooth transition within the highlights that in the channels panel version it is. So it's, it's kind of creating a gradation between the brightest and then the kind of the midtones which is like the, the end point for our selection. Whereas here it's, no, you know, no matter what we do, it's always creating a high contrast selection of more of the highlights and then creating the gradation outside of that range. So for me, in summary, the crux of the, uh, the question here is that if you want to use the color range tool to create your selections and luminosity masks, that's probably going to be fine under certain circumstances where you do want that high contrast, um, you know, that high contrast selection. For landscapes and seascapes where you're shooting sunrise like this, I personally would always go for the more subtle approach um, because using, you know, a higher contrast mask is, it's going to be tougher to create smoother blends with your adjustments and bracketed exposures. So, you know, I would still recommend that you just have a bit of a play and experiment with this if you want, or you could just uh, take what I've shown you here in the video as your answer. Um, but like I said, I've done a bit of experimentation. I haven't yet found a way of making the color range tool as subtle as using the channels panel. I did, uh, I did think about going into detail and showing you examples of the midtones and shadows as well. But I think it's just going to be the same issue, um, just using shadows instead of highlights. So, you know, it's 
whatever you do, it's always going to be that issue of contrast and gradation between the what's selected and what's not. And so with that, I think I'll wrap this video up. And just a quick reminder, like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to download my free PDF and introduction to luminosity masking, then there's a link in the video description below. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time.